Hi, I'm Bethany with Shabby Fabrics, and I'm so excited today to finally introduce to you the strawberry pen cushion from Plum Easy Patterns. This is a little felt and fabric pin cushion with a hanger filled with ground emery sand, which can help sharpen and shine your needles if they have like any little burrs on them. This is a great way to get those off of your needles and keep those really intact. So let's get into the pattern here. We're gonna start by prepping the felt top. Your kit's gonna come with fabric, felt, and embroidery floss, enough to make two pin cushions because it'll also include one jar of the ground emery, which does this little tiny jar, it doesn't look like it, but it can fill two of the strawberry pin cushions. Okay. Um, the pattern will also have shapes for you uh, that you can cut the leaf templates out of and the circle if you need that. I'm gonna show you a little trick to get that circle really fast and accurate. Um, I have pre-traced my shape onto cut right freezer paper and I'm going to, with the shiny side down, press that onto the felt and then I'll be cutting around this with scissors. Okay. And I don't know if you've ever seen like, um, whenever I ransacked my mom's sewing room, you know, she had that, that old school tomato pin cushion that always had a little strawberry hanging off the end. Um, that strawberry was traditionally filled with emery sand like this. Um, and it's really sharp and really fine and just helps sharpen those needles. So if you've seen those old tomato pin cushions with the strawberry on top, that's what that little strawberry is for. It was not just decorative. Okay. So we are gonna finish this shape here. And we're gonna do a little bit of machine sewing today, a little bit of hand sewing, and then we're also gonna use our glue gun to keep all that sand in place. Okay, and then once you have your shape cut out, I love the freezer paper because you can get that shape exactly as you traced it and then just peel that right from the back. Okay, that's your shape ready to go. We're gonna start with the glue gun first. Our two um, leaf shape here. We are going to I like to do a little circle on the back. I do wanna leave a little space in the middle that I will eventually be sewing through. And we're gonna set this on here. And I try to like poke that in so that that glue doesn't get in the middle, it kind of spreads outwards. Okay. You will have a length of thread in your kit. We're going to uh, put all six strands through your needle. And this is gonna go from underneath, right through the middle, up. And then I like to keep my finger here and go straight down through the middle again. We're gonna bring both ends through. And um, we do want to have a little space between those. We don't want to put them through the same hole. I'll take my needle out. We're going to pull these ends together. And then I'm going to knot this however long I want my hanger here. So what will happen is the top will slide down. I think I'd like about a two inch hanger. So I'm going to slide this back to the end and then tie a knot in this. This will eventually uh, be set with the hot glue as well, so there's not gonna be any chance of this coming undone. We'll trim that a little bit, and then a trick I found, if that loop got pulled tight to the front, I like to take the blunt end of the needle and pull that out. So your kit will include, again, two pieces of fabric here. You'll have one in the polka dot and one in the gingham, and you can trace that with the diagram you have here I, though, I love the rotary circle cutter from Ulfa. Um, this does a variety of sizes of circles and it's super easy to use. Can be um, a little confusing at first. Um, what this is is a blade, a pivot point, and then this actually ratchets around that pivot point. It's good to kind of test this out. You kind of put it down with that pivot point down and just go in a circle, okay? Um, so might test this out on a couple pieces of scrap fabric first. I'm just going to real quick make sure I can get around here. Super fast, one cut, you have a perfect circle there. Lock your blade, lock your point. We are going to press this in half and then press over a half inch seam allowance. 
in this. Now I've made a few of these and kind of tested out, do I want to just sew this by hand without pressing that seam? It's a pretty tight curve. Um, I've done it both ways and they both turn out just as successful, but I, for the sake of showing you kind of the textbook way to do this, I'm going to press in this half inch seam. It doesn't have to be anything pretty here. We are gonna eventually sew this with a running stitch and then gather that thread. Uh, we're just trying to get a clean edge on this about a half inch over. And then we're gonna sew this with a running stitch here. We want to use a really heavy thread. If you have like a button thread, that works great. This is a hand quilting thread. I'm gonna do about a one yard length of this. and We're gonna double strand our needle here. We're gonna do one strand through, but we will leave both lengths long and then tie the knot at the end. So through. All right both lengths all the way down. And then when I tie my knot, I want to leave a bit of a tail. That'll give me something to hold on to when I go to gather this together and pull this strawberry tight. So I will wrap this a few times, leave a few inches here in the knot. And this knot is here mostly as security, as insurance, so I don't pull the thread out as I'm gathering this. So when we start sewing, I'm going to go a bit more than a quarter inch past the edge and I'm gonna do that from the wrong side here. I mean, they're both right sides of fabric, but from the folded in edge of my fabric. And we're just gonna do a running stitch. You can actually just kind of accordion the fabric onto the needle. And just big stitches, this will be a stitch that we gather. And we're using that double thread because we're gonna put a lot of tension on this when we do pull those threads tight. We want those to be really strong so they don't have any chance of breaking. And then we will complete this all the way around. And then when we come to the very end, again, we're gonna stop a bit more than a quarter inch past the edge and we want that thread coming to the uh, wrong side of the fabric. Okay. Right here we can leave that thread, that tail long and cut that and then we're ready to take this to our sewing machine. So at our machine, we're gonna fold this right sides together, making like a quarter circle shape here. I want to pull my threads to the outside, so I'm not gonna catch those, and we'll sew this straight side with a quarter inch seam. Line these up a little better, okay? And then we can uh, backstitch at the beginning. And then when we get to a quarter inch from the edge, we're going to pivot with our needle down and turn this 45 degrees. Okay, that'll make the bottom of the strawberry not super, super pointy. Okay, back from our machine, I'm gonna trim my machine sewn threads, not the white threads here, and I'm gonna Snip the bottom just a little bit so there's not a lot of bulk in that fabric there. We are ready to fill this now, so I'll push this inside out. Okay. And before I start filling, I want to pull on my threads and gather this pin cushion. I say like gather it halfway. Um, I basically just want this not a super large opening so that when I fill it, I'm not having that overflow. Okay. So I'll set that down. And we are gonna start filling this. If you are working at home, you might wanna put, my mom likes to use like a rimmed cookie sheet to help catch the spills or a piece of newspaper you can use to catch that as well. But um, if you're very careful, hopefully I will be right now, we won't spill any of this. We're gonna fill the pincushion slowly. Okay, I used a little bit less than half there. And I like to tap this to kind of get the sand to settle a little bit. And we're gonna, Fill this till we're about a quarter inch, a half inch from the top of the pincushion. And it's getting pretty full here. And I'm still only used half of my sand, so that's good. We're gonna use the other half in a second pincushion. 
do a little bit more to top this off. I want these nice and tight. And then before I pull these closed, I'm going to take just a circle of felt here and place this right over the top. This is just like an extra barrier uh, to make sure nothing's falling out. You might see a few grains escape that, but this will keep most of it in place. And then now we are ready to pull these strings tight. Okay. Might be good to grab a maker friend and have them help you hold the still. Okay. I'm going to worry about shaping this after I've got it closed off. Okay, but I'm going to get this as tight as I can, and then I'll tie these threads off and seal the top with uh, hot glue so that we can make for certain sure that nothing's coming out of this pin cushion. Everything's really tight and all those grains are staying where they're supposed to stay. Okay. All right, that is nice and tight. I'm going to go in with the hot glue now and I'm going to fill um, really deeply into this as much as I can. And then I want it over the top quite a bit. I'll show you what I'm doing here. Uh, we do sell these hot glue guns on our website. They are a great tool to have in your crafting room or your sewing room. And I like that I can get just a big old dollop on here with each squeeze. Okay. And then we're going to take the top that we have here. We're going to kiss these two together. Get that centered. And then I like to kind of press my hand down on this to kind of get the leaves to, to go down and around the pincushion. I can feel it's really secure on this side. I'm going to add a little bit more glue over here to keep the top of this pincushion down just a little bit more. And that's just aesthetics for me to get it looking the way I want. And once I get it, I like to kind of tap it into shape. Make sure nothing's coming out. All right, and that is our pen cushion completed. It is so cute. I do want to show you how you would use this to sharpen or like buff up your needles here. If you feel like when you're putting these through fabric, there might be a little bit of like a catch on them. Maybe there's a little tiny burr. Uh, what I like to do, instead of it just putting it in the pen cushion, I actually like to get the pen cushion a little squeeze so it's a little tighter. Can you hear that in my microphone? Yeah. Uh, and help and just put that up and down a few times to get those burrs off. And you usually can feel immediately that those go through your fabric a lot easier. Um, this is a really good one since you have enough um, in your kit to make two pin cushions. Maybe make this with a friend. Uh, or it's really great to give to someone as a gift. Maybe if they're just getting into sewing as like a little keepsake to help get them started with their sewing kit. So thanks so much for joining me today. Give me a part of your day to show you this beautiful pin cushion. Again, this will be a free download for you on our website and we'll have limited kits available. I'll see you on the next Shabby tutorial.